What's up guys? This is Dr. Megan Hirsch with Movement RX. This is Midweek Mobility. This week we're going to be talking about hip osteoarthritis. All right, we're going to go through um, mostly for runners, but if you're a non-runner, tune in because this can apply to you as well. So what exactly is hip osteoarthritis? Um, first of all, the victim is the hip, okay? This guy right in here. Um, but a lot of times we get this idea that the hip is also the criminal, so we're going to be talking that, about that as well um, and what can be contributing to this hip osteoarthritis. Um, so the hip is a ball and socket joint. Um, I majored in art as you can see. So believe it or not, this is a pelvis and this is the femur. So our acetabulum here in the pelvis and then the ball and the socket. So what exactly happens with um, osteoarthritis is this blue stuff right here is the cartilage. Um, so what can happen is after we get a lot of compressive forces, we'll kind of get into that, um, but this lining starts to kind of wear away, okay? So we get rid of this lining here, and then what happens is we start to grow these things called osteophytes on the bone, okay? It's almost like a little bone spur. You start to lose that space in between, and that is your source of pain right there, okay? So long story short, that is hip osteoarthritis. Um, now, what is the criminal? Um, so we've got these things called risk factors that I like to call the accomplice. So they're not exactly causing this, but they're, they're not really helping us prevent it, okay? So these are age. So increasing age, um, over the age of 65, you're gonna be more at risk. Um, sometimes we've got some uh, predisposition genetic factors that go into it. Obesity, um, previous injury to the hip or another joint in the body. Um, and then congenital abnormalities, which is at birth, and one of them is hip dysplasia, okay? So these can all help contribute to this. Um, the causes that we're going to go over, so we've got running and gait patterns. So the way you run can be a big cause of that. Um, the other thing is motor control, the way your um, body basically controls some of the muscles you initiate. A lot of times this can go hand in hand. Next thing, muscle imbalances, which is going to be the strength of our hip stabilizers, so like our glute med, um, and then a decrease in range of motion. A lot of times these two will go hand in hand to contribute to this. So oftentimes we've got some weak muscles, and then we've got some muscles that are uh, tightened, shortened. Um, and this contributes to that decrease in range of motion. So that's what we're going to talk about today is how these tight hips can contribute to this osteoarthritis. Um, so basically, we want to go after the mobility first. Um, if you don't have the mobility, this stuff isn't really going to matter because if we can't get you into the right positioning, we're not really going to be able to fix your gait pattern. We're not going to be able to fix your strength, okay? So we're going to go after the mobility first. So there's a few tests that we can go through that you can go through yourself to kind of see um, where you're at if maybe this is your problem. First thing we're going to do is call what's a figure four test. So you're going to get on a table. You can get on a kitchen table. You're just going to lay down. You're going to take your foot, put it over your opposite knee, okay? And then what you want to do is keeping both hips on the table, you want to try and lower your knee, okay? You should basically get your knee parallel to your foot, okay? If you're not able to do that, then you might have some problems here in either hip flexion, abduction, or external rotation. We want the external rotation to be about 45 degrees. The next one is hip flexion. So again, back on your back, you should be able to pull your knees to your chest. We want to go straight up. We don't want to bring our knees out to the side, so straight up, okay? We should be able to get our thigh to our stomach without having pain, okay? So that's hip flexion test. The next one, we've got hip extension, all right? The way we test that is you can come to the edge of a table, plyo box, and what you're going to do is you're going to basically just bring one knee back, again, straight back, not out to the side. You're going to bring one knee back. And we should have that leg still resting on the table. We still want the knee at a 90 degree angle. We don't want to be coming off to the side here, okay? So if you guys are up here, it's definitely a hip extension issue. You've got some tight hip flexors. Or if you're out here, it's also a hip flexor issue, all right? 
Um, so those are just some, some tests. Now you might be asking, well, do we really need 45 degrees of external rotation when we run? Maybe not, but if you're tight in this external, or if you're, uh, if you're tight and you can't get into full external rotation, what's most likely happening when you run is you're being automatically pulled into internal rotation, okay? Because you're too tight to stay out there. So your internal rotation force is coming inward and look at what that force is doing at my hip, okay? So the tight hip can go into all these aspects right here. Running gait pattern, motor control, can screw up some of the muscle imbalances. Um, so you guys test these out and uh, if, you still have, if you still have any issues, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'd love to hear from you. See you guys next week.